Hello everybody. Thank you for joining us, Mark and Moira today. We trust you and all those that you love are well at this time. In the brief time that we have together, we wanted to share a few thoughts on friendship. Friends are always important, a truth that has been proved beyond all doubt during the pandemic. Using the wonders of modern technology, we have been able to reach out to support and encourage our friends and families. When we think of friendship, my mind invariably goes to four chapters in the Bible towards the end of 1 Chronicles, chapters 24, 25, 26 and 27. A bit of an odd place to find a reference to friendship, you might think. In these four chapters, there are listed many important and influential people in King David's kingdom. There are lists of priests and their families. You have listed the temple musicians, 288 in all. The temple guards are named and where they would be on guard. Also recorded are lists relating to the military, administrators, overseers of royal properties, civil organizers and advisors to the king. Then after all these lists of the important movers and shakers in David's kingdom, you read the following. And Hushai, the archite, was the king's friend. Hushai's name is one of the last to be mentioned. If you have an extremely long list of names, the first names on that list will be forgotten, but the last few names will be remembered. Hushai is among the last five people to be named in all those lists. Talking of names, never forget that your name is tattooed on one of the hands of Jesus. It is vital that each of us has a friend or a small circle of friends who we are accountable to and can in love tell us how it really is. Honest love that cares enough to, at the right time, be truthful. We have been talking about friendship on a human level, but it is no different with our relationship with God. A year ago, my friend Colin, of Colin and Tanya, gave me a book called Unexpected Healing by Jennifer Rees Larkham, a story of a Christian woman who becomes seriously ill with encephalitis, becoming an invalid in a wheelchair. One day, whilst praying, Jennifer loses her temper with God. She shouts at him, saying, Why did you let this happen to me, Lord? Surely I could have done so much for you if only I could have been healthy and active. God's answer was inaudible, but totally clear. A writer never goes anywhere without a notebook. She wrote down what God said. Many people work for me, but very few are willing to be my friends. That's what I want to be. It's your company I desire more than anything. Learn to sit and look at things and enjoy them with me. Seven years later, Jennifer was completely healed. Her books are well worth reading. During the lockdown, I trust you have been able to find time to simply sit with God, your friend. Throughout the last few weeks, I, like everyone else, have had to change what I do. And one of the positives that has emerged from this time of change is to rearrange and find a new time to spend with God in solitude. And I have done this through walking in the hills near where we live. The good weather and the change in circumstances have meant that I have found new places to be sit, to sit and to be quiet and to listen, to ask questions and to be with a father who loves us more than we will ever know. Part of this whole process has involved reading a book by an author called Dallas Willard and the book is called Hearing God. 
And we've actually been using this book as the basis of our Bible study in home group as well. I can thoroughly recommend um, this book if you want a comprehensive and practical basis for hearing God. My experience is that hearing God is a fundamental part of our friendship with God. And Dallas Willard provides the biblical basis and practical exercises in listening to a father who longs to speak to us as one who speaks with a friend. Also, um, during this time, friendship with our family, church family and friends has been crucial. Like many of you, I am part of a home group and I would urge you to join an ongoing group within church where you can regularly meet with others, that your faith be strengthened and you can learn from one another and also others can learn from you. Our friendships in home groups are strong. They are life-giving and we rely on each other to share our joys, the birth of a new baby, the safety of family in other parts of the country and world. We share our comfort when times are difficult and encourage one another in daily life. And we have noticed over the last few months and have sensed an awakening. Our prayers are confirmed and answers are given very, very quickly. God is our friend and he has given us friends on earth to share this life, to make the most of this time and these times. We'll finish um, by praying, um, and this is a prayer which is um, a Celtic prayer, traditional Celtic prayer. So let us pray. So as we settle our hearts, Christ be with you and Christ within you. Christ behind you, Christ before you, Christ beside you, Christ to win you, Christ to comfort and restore you, Christ beneath you and Christ above you, Christ in the quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in the hearts of all that love you, Christ in the mouth of a friend and stranger. May God be in every breath that we take. Amen.